This is a test program for LCD version 5.0. There are some new features that we want to take a look at that version 5.0 of the LCD has from Grove that version 4 doesn't. Now also as part of this video we want to see how to use a serial monitor that's built into Kyle Studio Cloud so we don't ever have to use PuTTY or some other terminal program to format up our PC screen. So in the past we've seen an include section where we have include embed.h but now we have to include the library here for the Grove LCD. Now the way you can do this is if you say number sign include if you're just creating a new program and if you've already got this LCD library loaded, then as soon as you say include and you put in quote and then you type gr and uh, it will show you what the auto completion is. Now you don't want this one, you want this particular one here. So all you have to do is click here and it auto completes for you. So that makes things a lot easier when you're creating your own program as you will need to do for the project. Also, in the hardware definition section, you have to specify some name and associate it with D14 and D15. And again, if you just type GR, it's going to allow you to choose from some of the stuff here. And you don't have to worry about uppercase, lowercase, and you can give it whatever name you like here and put in D14, D15. So that makes things a lot easier. And now let's take a look at our mainline program here. Once we're in our main, we'll notice here we've got volatile float ABC equals 3.14159. Why the word volatile? If you'll remember when we're doing debugging here, if we don't declare variables like float to be volatile, then we're not going to see things like ABC in a variables list. And so volatile will make sure it works exactly like it does on a PC. And we've got charbuff20, and which is a character array of 20 characters. And we're going to be using that further down when we use our sprintf command. Now, we also can see here is because what we have associated Fred with our LCD, then all we have to do is if we want to see what features we have, especially with the new version 5, we can just say Fred dot functions that are available for our LCD version 5. So there's things like CL and there's clear. If we back up here and we say SET, it's going to say set color, set whatever, but it also says set RGB. We don't have to remember what's uppercase or lowercase. All we have to do is type in the name that we've associated with our LCD in a dot, and it's going to be able to figure out all the other things. So we have the clear function, which clears the LCD, set RGB, which in this case, zero red, zero green, but all blue, so it's gonna be blue. We've got some new features here with version five. Cursor function, which turns on an underscore cursor. We've got a blink function, which turns on a blinking cursor. Do these one after the other, the underscore cursor will disappear and the blinking cursor will take over. Now we've got fred.locate, which five zero. Now the first number here is going to be your column, which goes zero to 15. And then you've got your row zero, which is the top row and one. Now the sprintf here, as I said, is you want to take a number and put it into an array of characters because the print function here cannot handle data. So this is what we do. We say sprintf, which is like a printf. And again, you can see here the quotes here. And here's our data in our array. So this data is going to go into this format and then be put into the array, as we'll see. And then once it's in the array, we just print the array of characters. Now, when we say fred.noblink, it's going to shut off our blinking cursor. But we've already turned on an underscore cursor. So we expect to see it showing up after the blinking cursor disappears. And then the rest of it we've got here is really just to format the PC screen. So we've got printf backslash e, left square bracket 2j, which clears the PC screen. And if we want to position things similar to what we've got here, so forth, then we want to do escape left square bracket 1 semicolon 6h, which is the same thing as 5 comma 0. And then we want to flush that, we want to print or buffer, flush that, and then see what happens. Now, as we start tracing through code, you'll see that jumps ahead. Notice we've got ABC here is a random value. Now, if we trace again, it's going to go back and do it properly this time. And right now we're going to see 3.14159 and so on. But notice all this extra stuff that's coming in here. And the reason for that is we've declared it to be a float. And to get rid of that, we can actually just make it a double and that will go away. Now, there's our char buffer, and you'll notice that we don't have all zeros. Some of this is random garbage because this is in RAM, which makes sense. Now, if we go and trace ahead to the next one, we're going to see that it's now cleared the display because it's already 
done this, but it hasn't done this. This is the next one that will be executed. So if we trace ahead one more time, you'll see that our screen is now turned to blue. Now, if we trace again, we have a cursor there that's kind of hard to see. But if we now go to the blink, we'll see a blinking cursor. There it is. It's a little easier to see on our screen. So if we now trace over, what we're going to see is it's locating it. And you can see that our cursor is now moved to column five and row zero, which is six characters over from the left and right on the top row. And now when we do the sprint F, what it's doing is we'll see here that we've got two spaces and 3.14. And the reason for that is it's in a field of six. One, two, three, four, five, six, and including the dot. And then when we say fred.print, we see it coming up on our screen. Now, if we say fred.noblink, we're going to see that we have our underscore cursor because we didn't shut it off. Now, at this point, what we can do is we can go back here and we can click on this button here, which is our serial monitor. And when we do that, we're going to then have to select 9600 baud, and this whole window here will be Freedom K64. Now, we had some stuff here from before, and as we go back now again to our debug and start tracing ahead, what we're going to see is as we trace ahead, it should have cleared the screen. It didn't because it's waiting for the F flush. It's positioning it at position one and six, but it hasn't done that until we actually flush. So now it's cleared and positioned us here. Now it's printed the buffer of ASCII characters, but until we have flush, it doesn't show up. And there it is there, and our program is finished.